In first year Greek, we generally teach students to translate using the words a or the, depending upon whether the Greek word ha is present. If the noun is articular, if ha is there, we tend to say the. And if the noun is not preceded by the article, in other words, if it's an arthrus, we tend to translate it with a, some notable exceptions right up front. But that's generally how we do it. Because Greek does not have an explicit word, which we would call the indefinite article. Now, there are some constructions that can be indefinite. For example, the word haste, normally translated as one, can become indefinite in the sense of someone. And you can have an articular participle that is very indefinite. For example, in John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that the one who believes, well, the one who believes is the articular participle. It's very indefinite. Whoever believes, in other words. Um, so there are constructions in uh, Greek that are indefinite, but while we don't have the actual word, okay? Well, that creates some interesting problems from time to time. For example, in John 3, 25, it says that a controversy broke out between the disciples of John Meta Iudayu, with a Jew over uh, cleansing. Now, if you would just translate that word for word, blindly, word for word, what do you have? Well, a controversy broke out between the disciples of John and a Jew. And some translations do that. What's the problem with that? Well, it's not very polite, is it? We, we don't refer to Jewish people as a Jew. Just like we don't refer to Polish people uh, with a term, or Irish people, or Italian people. I mean, no, I'm not going to use the slang words that are generally used. But I'm not being politically correct here, by the way. I'm not motivated by political concerns, but I do want to speak politely. Now, my mom was a McTavish, so I am Scottish. You can refer to me as a Scot. You cannot refer to me as a Scotch. That's a drink and a kind of tape. It's not a person. But there's not been a, at least in the U.S., there's not been a history of pejorative feelings connected with the word Scott. There has been with Jew. So the problem with simply translating word for word, a Jew, is that it miscommunicates because it adds in an element of, of being pejorative. So what do you do? Well, some translations use the word certain, and they're saying a certain Jew. And what they're trying to do with the word certain is lessen that pejorative sense. And it, that works for that, doesn't it? They were arguing with a certain Jew. The problem, and you may not hear it the way I hear it, but when I hear a certain Jew, it is really definite. It's the exact opposite of what the Greek is. And when I hear a certain Jew, I hear a specific Jew, a very specific Jew. In fact, when I read a certain Jew, I, I kind of stop and start looking through the text and go, oh, this person must have been introduced earlier in the story. He must be an important person or a significant player in the story or something. And of course, he's not. This is the first time he's introduced. And so a certain Jew to me really miscommunicates because it's too specific. It's not indefinite. So what's a translator to do? Well, my preference would be to translate a Jewish person. It's indefinite. It's singular. It's not pejorative. It, it really clearly identifies the authorial intent. The only problem with it is that P is a plosive, and words that begin with plosives are kind of ugly words in, in English. And... I'm getting used to saying people in person in translation, but for the most part, we tend to stay away from those words just because they're linguistically, they're just, they're ugly words, okay? But I think a Jewish person, it comes most closely to what actually is being intended without introducing ideas that are completely foreign to the text. So be careful of those word for word translations because they can introduce false ideas. You know, English is changing. All languages change. And English as a language is really changing. And not just in gender language. It's changing in many ways. Uh, unfortunately, the subjunctive is going away. Predicate nominatives are going away. Um, you know, for a long time, the King James exerted a, a very strong influence on the English language and slowed the evolution of English, much like Luther's translation slowed the development of German. But 
those forces are gone now and English is really, really changing. And for the most part, I'm really, well, I don't like the subjunctive going away because I like the specificity of it, but I, I can finally split an infinitive. Yay, Latin grammarians are gone. You know, you take an adverb you're supposed to in English, put it right next to the verb. So you can go too quickly go. It's perfectly acceptable English now. So some of these changes I, I do welcome. So that's why translators really have to stay current. They need to read newspapers. They have to read style guides. We have to be aware of what's going on in a language so that when we translate the Bible, we're translating it in the Koine. We're translating it in the common language, how you hear these words. But interesting example, I think, of John 3 and the whole issue of indefinite constructions. Music